Well, good morning. Thank you for being here. I am Wendy Randolph, and you may know me from Closure Camp. Go, go, go. Clickety click, click, click. <laughs> Clickety click, 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 click. Yeah. All right, there we go. We can do this with hands. All right, Closure Camp or other conferences like ElixirCon for Heart of Closure, ClosureConj. Um, that's where I have been. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about two things that are near and dear to my heart, uh, Closure and Elixir. And a uh, quick show of hands, who has written Closure? All right, cool. How about Elixir? All right, cool. Kind of half and half. Um, um, and who has worked on web apps? All right, cool. All right. Um, nice little mix. Um, I hope that uh, looking over these programming languages today, you may find some answers to the web app problems that keep you up at night. Um, so in my abstract, I said I would show you the exact same web app in both languages. Well, that was a bit of a lie. Um, so I will show code examples um, from two related apps, a simple closure crud app that I built called Fabric Stash and the Elixir Phoenix upgrade that I'm working on. So if you didn't already know, I am a crazy person and I decided on closure as my first programming language. So moment of silence for younger me's uh, brain cells. <laughs> and at the same time, I was learning Emacs and Datomic and how to build web apps. So it was a lot all at the same time, but it was a good time. Um, so learning Clojure, this is just some basic routes um, from, clo from my Clojure uh, application. I just, it shaped the, learning Clojure as my first language shaped the way that I think about programming. Um, the REPL-driven environment, the incremental develop that allowed the incremental development, um, being exposed to what immutability means and pure functions, um, all these things stuck with me. And then I did what plenty of closure devs do. They got a job in a different language. <laughs> An elixir uh, built on what I knew, but added new perspectives, pattern matching, lightweight concurrency, tooling, like, I Mix and IEX and Phoenix Live View that sped up my productivity. And so what was I doing with all this functional, immutable, concurrent power? Well, building web apps, of course. Um, but when we say web apps, what are we talking about? Uh, well, web apps are more than just websites. They enable interaction, transactions, uh, com and complex tasks. So since we all, it seems like a lot of people in here already know what web apps are, we don't have to go over a lot, um, but you know, basic components, HTTP, routing, business logic, storage, async tasks, no matter the language, you're solving the same puzzle. You take a request, you do something smart, you send a response. And soon we'll see how these two functional languages uh, assemble this puzzle. But before I talk about the differences, uh, between the languages, we should cover a few similarities between them. Um, so both languages are functional. They have immutability at their core. Uh, they're symbiotic with an established platform. Uh, we can do metaprogramming. They have small core languages. Their concurrency models don't share state. Um, they have REPL-driven workflows and enthusiastic, though niche, communities. Uh, so for con concurrency, uh, Clojure was designed from, for concurrency from the start. And core.async builds on that foundation by bringing Go channels, Go style channels into functional programming and letting you write composable channel-based async code that feels synchronous and treats communication as data. So Go blocks are cheap, we spawned 1,000, we got alts, that await on many channels, and the channels with the Go blocks give you data flow over time. And with Elixir, um, they use the actor model via OTP. Uh, the actor model, everything runs on lightweight, in lightweight, isolated processes with no shared state. These processes are powered by the Open Telecom Platform, or OTP. That's your power layer. That's the battle-tested set of patterns and libraries for building fault-tolerant systems like supervisors' tasks, gen servers. 
and here in this example, um, we get a process per upload. Uh, Live view spins up a process per upload, handling the concurrency under the hood. And each file is consumed in its own beam process. And the virtual machine handles the scheduling, the load balancing, and recovery while you write simple declarative code. Beyond the concurrency differences, uh, Clojure um, is intentionally hosted in that it compiles to and runs on the runtime of another language, such as the JVM or other uh, virtual machines. Um, that's so we can have programs written in Clojure um, can leverage and interop with the libraries of the host language directly and efficiently. And with Elixir, Elixir runs on the beam, and you can fully use Erlang's standard library tools and OTP infrastructure. So besides these awesome things, the things that stood out to me the most were the, was the developer experience, especially that of someone who was new to programming. When I first started with Clojure, as I said, I was just getting into programming, so I had heard people say, Clojure is flexible, and that's a good thing. But from my perspective at the time, that flexibility added a lot of, added a lot of cognitive load. Um, with Clojure, you compose your app from small focused libraries like Ring, Composure, Hiccup, and shape it your way using pure functions and data. But with that flexibility came trade-offs. There's no official Clojure web framework. And you're walking into a forest of libraries, and it's on you to figure out what you need to compose things together. And that range of motion that Clojure enjoys reminds me of, well, me. I've always been physically flexible. I can reach down past my toes ever since I was a kid. After an injury, I found out that I was hypermobile, which my, my joints move more than they should. Um, and flexibility without strength actually became a liability. It was instability. And I feel like with closure, I think you need to build a strong foundation of knowledge uh, that brings control, letting you shape your code exactly how you want. Then when I started using Elixir, um, I learned Phoenix and LiveView um, along at the same time. Phoenix is a server-side web app framework, and LiveView is a library for the framework that lets you build rich, real-time, interactive web interfaces without writing JavaScript by hand handling UI updates server-side over WebSockets. So many things immediately felt easier and well integrated. For one, init project initiation was a breeze. Here are the five commands to start an Elixir project with Phoenix and LiveView. It takes five seconds to read, and that's all you need to get started. I could get right into building app logic instead of considering what library to use, what to rig up together. Not to mention that my UI with Tailwind CSS uh, made everything real pretty real fast. So overall, what it was like for me getting into both languages um, closure, there's lots of options. You can tailor their stack exactly to your needs. The developer experience is less guided. You piece things together yourself. In Elixir, the deep integration, uh, I felt right away with things working together. Um, and there were strong defaults and great documentation. So as to why you would want to use, why would you want to use Clojure? Uh, to build web apps? Well, there are lots of reasons. Uh, one reason is the, the composable data-driven approach um, that Clojure takes. And when I first started using Clojure, um, I used Datomic as well. Datomic is an immutable transactional database that records every fact over time, enabling powerful declarative queries with built-in historical insight. I used the docs to make the most beautiful schema. Here's just a little part of it. Uh, tested some queries, loved it. Um, but I didn't want to spend more time figuring out all the other libraries that I had to bring up, bring up together. So I chose a framework called Coast with a different database to get me up and running. Um, but really, if you want to use Clojure for web apps, everything is data, the HTML, 
routing, request, response. Web servers are just pure function pipelines. You can build apps with composing functions, transforming data, no hidden magic. Um, so with minimal depths, I can start a ring and hiccup project. We have um, some, let's see, we have, this is some hiccup here, which lets you write HTML, but you're writing closure code. So it's data structures that you can pass around and work with, not just strings. So that's super awesome in and of itself. And then we have a rare, uh, a bear ring handler and eval this uh, jetty handler to start a server. And it's minimal, but it's like, bam, you're, you're done. You have, you have something on your screen already. So that's pretty awesome. Um, with Elixir, it's also compelling for languages, or it's also compelling for web apps. The traditional web stack you, know, you may be familiar with of having your front end, JavaScript framework, um, stuff for routing, your server, and your WebSockets layer. There are many layers, duplicated logic, fragile wiring. And with LiveView and Elixir uh, Phoenix, everything is, all these things happen inside your live view. So all interaction, the validation, file uploads, modals is handa via live socket events like validate. And while well, I had like save fabric functions for my fabric app, the server re-renders just the changed parts of the DOM with, oh, here we go. This is what we need to see. We have our live view, we have our simple form, we have our handle event. And then let's see. When this fabric is saved, what I was trying to say is just the, so the server re-renders just the changed parts of the DOM, no page reload, no sign client side JS. When the fabric is saved, the live view process updates in its local state um, via at fabrics, and boom, the UI updates in real time. So this live view is a supervised process. If it crashes, it starts, restarts cleanly, that OTP starts kicking in. And yes, live view can feel like magic until it doesn't. So there are some considerations uh, when, when, when using it. This magic behind the scenes, it's a real good idea to have a mental model of what this live view live, so uh, live, view life cycle looks like, because it's easy to feel lost uh, when it goes wrong. And one difference, because we have the a state that's living on the server, you can't just open dev tools. You need to use things like something called IO inspect to understand what's going on. I find that very helpful. And overall can feel like backend debugging uh, for front end problems. So now I hope you have a little more, if you weren't familiar with both languages, I hope you are a little more familiar with both now. Um, and, or at least you have an idea of what it was like for me as a, as a newer programmer to get started in both of these languages. So if you're interested in, maybe you don't know either of these languages, um, is there one versus the other that appeals to you more? Um, if you're new to building web apps, um, I'd go maybe try Phoenix um, with El Elixir with Phoenix. If you're okay spending more time with careful stack considerations, um, go for closure. Also for data, data heavy applications, I'd say go closure. Um, data science, again, I'm kind of leaning closure. Uh, check out the SciClosure uh, community for closure data science tools. Yeah. Um, fault tolerancy with high concurrency projects. I'm, I'd say Elixir, that kind of stuff is built in, but you can also do that with closure. So I hope some of these languages or these languages have piqued your interest if you weren't already familiar. I'd love to talk to you if you want to chat about these topics or have any other have any questions. Please talk, talk to me um, at the conference or reach out to me online. Uh, thank you for being here today. I hope to hear, or if you'd like to hear more about these languages or from me, um, you can check out on the schedule uh, tomorrow. Let's see. Uh, tomorrow, um, I'm on a panel with three other lovely ladies at 10.05. For track two, um, today in here, a little after lunch, we have Jordan Miller talking about closure and atomic. 
And then at the end of the day today, we have Kim talking about LLMs and Clojure. So please go check that out. And we have several other talks, several other talks here that are uh, related to the beam. So that would be good ones for you. So please enjoy the rest of your conference. Thanks for being here. Fantastic.